My weather app kept changing its mind, so I collected 1,495,257 forecasts to find out if they are actually accurate. I will present to you the truth about temperature versus rain and how accuracy collapses as you look further out. I decided to do this because every morning I check my weather app for how the weather is going to be. And when I'm going to an event, I might even check the weather many days leading up to the event. But by doing that, I noticed something weird. The forecasts are changing a lot leading up to the event. One day it may say that it will rain and the next day it might say it will be full sun, before then turning back to rain again a few hours later. It has made me very skeptical of weather apps. I mean, can I even trust anything that they are saying? I decided to take matters into my own hands. I live in Scandinavia where there are two very popular weather apps, the Norwegian Ur and the Danish DMI. I also found this third source called Open Meteo, which markets themselves as using powerful AI to select the most suitable weather model to find the most accurate model for the location. I decided to collect data from all three and compare the results. By using multiple different providers, the goal is not just to compare which of the three are the best, but also to get a general idea about how accurate weather forecasts are, regardless of which app you use. I coded up a small application which calls their respective APIs to get all the weather forecasts every hour. For the less techy people, that basically just means that I asked each of the apps to give me forecasts as far out into the future as they could. If we take Ur as an example, if I was asking for the weather Monday morning, it would give me hourly forecasts for the next 48 hours, and then 4 forecasts per day for the next around 10 days. Since I was doing this every hour for weeks, I could keep track of how the weather forecast for a given time and day changed over time. For example, here is what the forecast looked like for this Sunday at 1920. As you can see, the dotted red line is what the actual temperature was at the time and each of the blue dots represents a temperature forecast. We can see that when we were looking at the forecast many days out into the future, the forecast stayed the same for many hours at the time. But as we got closer, around 48 hours before the time we were looking at, the forecast started to change more often. And for the rain, the dotted blue line in the bottom shows us that it ended up raining zero millimeters, whereas the green dots show us that the forecast many days ago were predicting that it would indeed rain. For comparison, this is what DMI predicted over time. By the way, this is probably a good time to say how I found the actual weather. Remember how I said before that I would call these three services once per hour to get all of their forecasts? At the same time, I would also ask them, what is the weather right now? I'll be referring to these measurements as actuals because I could not find a better name. And even though these actuals are also estimates, I would take these as the truth, because what else could I do? I was also considering just standing outside 24-7, taking my own measurements, but I decided against it because I have a life. Before we get to the results, I decided to make myself a better weather application. Because even before I was done with the data analysis, I could clearly see that, as I expected, I could not blindly trust the data that my weather apps were telling me. So I decided to use one of humanity's greatest innovations, statistics. If I were, for example, looking at what the temperature would be like in the evening or the next day, I could calculate how wrong this is likely going to be. Let's say I'm looking at a weather forecast 8 hours into the future. I could look at all other forecasts made by the provider and assume that it looked like a normal distribution. This is not a video explaining everything about normal distributions, but here are the basics. Let's say that we have 100 predictions from the past that are made 8 hours into the future. For each of them, we can measure how wrong they were. This point might be 1 degree off and this one might be 0.3 degrees off. If we stack all of the points on top of each other, we get a curve that looks like this. Most of them are pretty close to the actual temperature, while few predictions are completely off. We can then calculate what the likelihood is that a given forecast is accurate. Generally, 68% of the points are within what is called one standard deviation. If we then calculate how many degrees one standard deviation is, we know with 68% likelihood what the actual temperature will be within this range. For example, here we can see that when looking 8 hours into the future, 
The latest forecast show 13.0 degrees. I have then calculated that when looking 8 hours into the future, one standard deviation is 0.47 degrees. This means that we can be 68% sure that the actual temperature will be in the range of 12.53 degrees and 13.47 degrees. Pretty cool, huh? And if we want higher certainty, we can see that for two standard deviations, we can be 95% sure that it will be within 12.06 degrees and 13.94 degrees. And the same can be done for three standard deviations. Just for fun, I also added the median historical error, meaning that the average forecast in this case is half a degree off. And I also added the maximum historical error, which was a whopping 5.26 degrees, meaning that the temperature intervals become so big that it is completely impossible to plan what to wear. Thankfully, because of statistics, we know that such bad predictions are very unlikely when looking only 8 hours into the future. Temperatures are only part of the story. I also added a similar statistics for rain. However, since it thankfully does not rain most days where I live, I could not use the same normal distribution analysis. Instead, I decided to basically divide all the forecasts into two groups. The ones that said that it would rain, and the ones that said that it would not rain. For each of the ones that predicted it would rain, I then looked at how often they were right, and the same for the ones that said it would not rain. By doing this, I could calculate that when looking 8 hours into the future, and it said it would not rain, it was true 98.14% of the time. By having all of this, I think I made a much more accurate weather app than any app that I could find. However, what would be even cooler is getting a graph that shows over time how accurate these numbers are. So that is the next thing I did. Remember how we before calculated the standard deviations, median temperature error and so on when looking 8 hours into the future? I did that for all the hours that I had available, meaning that for any point into the future we can see these numbers. And to make it easy for myself, I created this very simple front-end application, which makes a nice interactive graph. But first, let's have a look at how many data points we have. As we can see, when looking at data for Oslo from Ur, we have more than 1000 data points for each hour for the first 51 hours into the future. It then drops off quite fast to around 200 data points all the way to 239 hours into the future, which for the Americans out there equates to around 10 days. The reason is, as I stated in the beginning, that Ur provides hourly forecasts when looking up to 2 days ahead, but only 4 forecasts per day when looking more than that ahead. If we switch to mean temperature error, we can see all of these beautiful data points. And help me explain what we are looking at. We can for example see here, when looking 24 hours into the future, the mean, aka the average, amount of degrees that forecasts were wrong, was around 0.8 degrees Celsius. As I suspected, the more hours into the future we are looking, the more the forecasts are wrong on average. But I was actually quite surprised how little they are of. I mean, even when looking one week into the future, the average temperature error was less than 2 degrees Celsius. That is actually remarkably accurate. And if we switch to media numbers, it looks quite similar. By the way, you may notice that these numbers are way more on a perfect line. This is because the predictions made by the sources are in steps of 0.1 degrees Celsius. This means that we can never have a temperature be off with let's say 0.82 degrees. It will always be in intervals of 0.1 degrees. And if you know the difference between mean and median, it will make sense. If you don't understand it, ask in the comments and I'm sure a friendly watcher will be willing to give you a good explanation. When looking at data from all the sources, we can see that they are all pretty similar. Well, UR is generally a bit better than the other ones, especially when looking far ahead. But I was honestly a bit disappointed by these results. I had hoped that I could prove that you cannot rely on your weather apps because it would have made for a great video title. But when we start to get into the stats for the rain, things get a bit more interesting. Remember how I explained before that I had looked at how often the predictions are right when splitting the predictions into two groups? Well, let's take a look at this again. But this time, we will make two lines. One that shows how often it was correct when not predicting rain, 
and another for predicting rain. When looking at this, we can see that for example when looking 24 hours into the future, Europe was right 95% of the time in Oslo when predicting no rain. That was actually a bit worse than I would have expected, especially given that they are so accurate at predicting temperature. This means that if you live in Oslo and check your weather app, and it says it will not rain tomorrow at the same time of the day that you currently have, it is only correct 1 out of 20 times. But as you may have noticed, it is way worse when it is saying that it will rain. When looking 24 hours into the future, my results show that it's only correct 45% of the time. I was really surprised, so I looked at the numbers for DMI and Open Meteo, and it is similar, if not worse. In fact, look at how bad DMI is predicting rain for Copenhagen. And just a reminder, DMI is a Danish weather app trying to predict when it will rain in Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. I was really shocked about these results, and I have tried to come up with a good explanation for it. The first part of the explanation is really obvious. Most of the time it does not rain, and it would therefore be really easy to make a very accurate prediction by always predicting that it will not rain. But clearly this would not be very useful. So weather services need to make some statistical trade-offs here. And to me, it looks like they have chosen an approach where they prefer to surprise positively when they are wrong. Imagine that they only said it would rain when they were 99% sure it would rain. Then the people using the app would almost never bring an umbrella. And when it then starts raining without the apps predicting it, the users would be really mad at the app. So instead it looks to me like whenever they think that there is some chance of rain, they will say it will rain x amount of millimeters at this time. When they are wrong, the users are just happily surprised. But while doing this, they know that they will get it wrong more often than if they were aiming for 100% accuracy. And that is actually an interesting trade-off we often make when we are creating either software or statistical models. How do we treat the cases where we are uncertain? It is also something that comes up with LLMs a lot. When it does not know what the right answer is, should it make a good prediction even though it might not always get it right, or should it instead say that it does not know? For LLMs it's a bit more complicated than that due to how they are trained, but you get the idea. And the other reason why I think these results are so bad is due to how I have collected the data. You see, I only fetch new data once every hour. So for example, if I want to know how good a prediction was for the temperature at let's say 9 o'clock last Sunday, I would then look at the actual temperature for the closest time I had to 9. It might be 9 or it might be 9.29, but regardless, that is the time I use to determine if a forecast was correct or not. And unlike temperature, which moves tiny amount every minute, rain is way more unpredictable since it might sometimes rain many millimeters for a few minutes before then stopping completely. Due to the granularity of my data, it might therefore introduce some errors. If it for example did not rain at 9, where I got the data, but it then rained 10 minutes past 9, then I would have missed that. But to my defense, no weather apps that I know make any weather forecasts down to the minute anyways, so I believe my method is pretty fair. But still, even with these explanations, it is surprising how bad they are predicting rain. So who was the overall winner? Well, the overall winner was Ur. For both Oslo, Stockholm and Copenhagen, Ur was outcompeting the rest of the competition. And the worst seems to be DMI. But more importantly, I have learned that I can actually trust the temperature forecast quite well, even many days into the future. And when the app tells me that it will not rain today, I trust it. Even though I know that it will be wrong once or twice a month. But when it says it will rain at a certain hour, I now know that it's basically a coin flip whether, <coughs> whether or not it will actually rain. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. That is the best way to help me out. And also there's this new hype feature on YouTube, so feel free to use that as well. Bye.